She touches it and winces. Eve returns to the bed, then searches for something underneath. She produces an she produces an empty whiskey bottle. Here, a knocking at the door. Just a second. Eve cracks the door open. 
An attractive woman wearing an Angora sweater over her shoulder stands outside. A security officer stands beside her. Yes? Are you all right? Yes. I was just having a nightmare. Well, someone called to report a murder up here. Are you sure you're okay, Miss Hunter? Eve. Thanks, Chris. I got it. Go ahead and take your dinner break. Sorry for the trouble. No trouble at all. Just strange. <laughs> what do you mean? May I come in? Laura enters the room. She looks around and then returns her attention to Eve. When they called about the noise, I noticed your check-in on Friday, but I didn't see a checkout date. And we don't have a credit card on file for you. Did you present one when you arrived? I... Ma Moira notices the empty whiskey bottle in Eve's hand. Are you all right? Yes, I'm sorry. I'll get you a credit card right now. Well, no rush. It's all right. I'll be at the front desk all evening. Either that or in the loo. The loo? Uh, it's the name of our bistro, the cocktail lounge around the back of the building. <laughs> it's French. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds nice. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I see you in the loo, I'll buy you a drink. How's that? What's your name again? Moira. Moira with the Angora sweater. Well, you're funny. Okay, <laughs> Eve, I'll see you in a bit. Ciao. Moira exits. Eve closes the door behind her. Friday? Eve places the empty whiskey bottle into a trash can. She looks at herself in the, in the mirror, <clears throat> into her own eyes. She slaps herself across the face. She slaps herself again. Eva undresses. She puts on a red dress. She fixes her hair, gathers up her index cards, journal, and her purse, then turns out the lights. Lights up on the Louvre, Bistro, and Fireside Lounge. <laughs> Eve sits at a table next to a fireplace, writing in her journal, nursing a whiskey. Enter an attractive couple. Eve watches them from across the room. At least we can be here for alone for a moment. Moira, in the name of human decency, please, two whiskeys? I don't want to tell you, Yosef. But it doesn't work. They are not working. I am working my ass off. The story, Yosef. You know I love you, Yosef. I even raised you in a way. I nursed you with a bottle when Mama was gone. You probably don't remember, but I didn't have any toys, so you were my living little boy doll. Karen? <laughs> my point is, I know your ass, and I know when you're making a mess. You stabbed me in the front. <laughs> You want me to lie to you? You want me to kiss your ass, darling? Come on. At least I'm honest. These are perilous times, Karen. Then I suggest you take a moment to ask yourself, what is it that I really want to say to these people? On the brink of an apocalypse. <laughs> then what speaks to your heart and mind on the brink of an apocalypse, Yosef? Yosef notices Eve watching them. The new flavor of fascism. There's a start. Here, here. Yosef, don't, please. Yosef walks towards Eve's table. Would you mind if I bought you a drink? My name is... I know who you are, Mr. Bodovic. They shake hands. I'm a huge fan. Yosef notices a table covered with Eve's index cards, notes, and her journal. He releases her hand. What are you writing? Wow, come on, please join us. Bring your things, Miss... Eve. Eve, it's a pleasure to meet you. They join Karen at the table. Moira serves them another round of whiskeys. Yosef watches Moira. A look of recognition passes between them. Moira walks away. What are you doing, Yosef? Okay, Eve. I would like to introduce you to my former wet nurse <laughs> and puppeteer, <laughs> my sister Karen. She's also the stage manager of the production we are working on. Wow. You keep it all in the family. That's great. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Be nice. Are you an actress, Eve? No. Eve is a writer. My condolences. Are you any good? Yes, I am. My condolences. <laughs> Eve, we are on the verge of a catastrophe. The theater... I mean, we are just all actors on a stage, aren't we? None of this is real. It's a performance, a performance with the ability to fly in the face of fascism. So, you're putting on a play? Oh, Eve, it's not just a play, it's <laughs> avant-garde. <laughs> it's deep. <laughs> Go ahead, Yosef. Why don't you tell her what it's called? She's not ready. 
<laughs> Tell me, I can handle it. Waiting for Goddard. I see. <laughs> it's a horrible play. Enough. <laughs> Why is it horrible? Nothing happens. I mean, what kind of person enjoys watching two dirty old French men beat each other off for like two hours straight? Actually, that would make a better theater than what we are doing in this space right now, Yosef. I'm just saying, Yosef. Yosef, seriously, blankly. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Thank you, Moira. Would you like to come to a party with us? Yosef, leave her alone. I'd love to. <laughs> Oh, no good can come of this. I'm warning you, then I wash my hands of everything. I'm exhausted. You're drunk. I stopped getting drunk a long time ago, Yosef. Thanks to you. Come on, Eve. Welcome to the circus. Eve and Karen leave arm in arm. Yosef dances up the hillside ahead of them. How long has he been like this? <laughs> Four days now, since the accident. I'm sure you've heard. I didn't. Yosef's wife was killed four days ago. And I hit run. Oh my god. And we're opening in three weeks, and the government is rounding up people. And we're on the verge of a catastrophe. An apocalypse! What's that you say? The company! It's your Jesse percussion and brass band, playing Goran Bregovich, Messesina. Cast and crew members alike dance and drink beneath the vine covered canopy of the theme and vine verse patio. The music slows, even Yosef continue to dance. An attractive man in a very official looking police uniform enters the room. He watches Eve and Yosef intently. A violin plays. The singer from the band takes a break. She, si she sits at a table and begins to deal out tarot cards, playing the form of solitaire. Eve and Yosef continue to dance. Why did you invite me here? What were you writing when Karen and I walked into the Louvre? None of your business. You didn't answer my question, Mr. Brodick. Yosef. What do you want from me, Yosef? Nothing. Yosef spins Eve away from him. He returns to her, shimmying his shoulders. Eve takes a bottle of whiskey from the table and drinks from it. People voice their approval. Yosef takes oh. a bottle from Eve's hand and then dips her on the dance floor. Eve laughs. <laughs> Yosef? Because you are cursed too, and believe me. He stumbles away from Yosef, <laughs> laughing. She approaches the table. The singer places his card face down in front of her. Eve turns it over. Holy crap. What is it? You might want to reconsider your options, honey. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? It says, a dream you have will come true. <laughs> Sounds like a fortune cookie. <laughs> it is. Here. I think he'll very good for you. <laughs> okay. Now I'll tell my own fortune. Watch this. The fool. The guy who has ten swords in his back. The mm -hmm. devil. Death. The hangman. All right. Enough of this shit. <laughs> the cards are not to be taking, taken literally, right, Delphina? It doesn't take a genius, <coughs> Yosef. To see that you are burning a candle at both ends at this production. So I should just hang myself then? Not on my watch. How are you doing, Mr. Broderick? Acting Police Captain Tyrell Addison. Shake hands. Two uniformed officers enter behind Captain Addison. Of course, Captain. <laughs> Enough of the music! Give us a second, please. Eve backs away next to Karen. Karen and Addison smile at each other. Eve notices. Uh, Mr. Broderick, this is a search warrant signed by Judge Davies. We'd like to take a look at your vehicle. Is it parked in the garage there? Yes. Addison nods to a uniformed officer. The, uniform, the officer speaks into his police radio. Mr. Broderick, have we met before? No, Captain. How come I get the feeling that I know you from somewhere? How long have you been in this country, Mr. Broderick? 22 years. You a citizen? No. I see. Mm -hmm. We good to go? The officer listens on, 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 to his police radio. He gives Addison a thumbs up. We good to go? <laughs> you have a good evening, Mr. Brother. Oh, and Mr. Brother. My name is Yosef. Yosef. Hmm. I would like to advise you not to leave the county until you're contacted by my office. You have a good night, sir. <laughs> oh, and you, miss. You, you. Come here. Eve approaches. Can I see some identification, please? Thank you. Corona Del Mar. Sounds like a magical king. 
<laughs> and where are you staying in our fair city, Miss Hunter? At the Fireside Inn. Fireside Inn, I never heard of it. Next to the Lou, Cap. Ah, oh, yes, the Lou. That's staying on our community. <laughs> Is your registered vehicle parked down there in the parking lot? Yes. And when did you arrive in our beautiful township? Friday. What is this all about, Captain? What is your purpose of your visit to Amity Harbor, Miss Hunter? She's working on the play. Working on the play. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very exciting. Congratulations, Miss Hunter. I would also like to advise you not to leave the county unless you're contacted by my office first. Greg Aletti, tell Greg to him. Y'all have a nice evening. Exit Captain Addison in the offices. The band begins to play a favorite. Inspired rendition of Enter Let's Me. People sing and dance. Yosef stands and stares. He watches him with concern. She reaches out to touch him. Yosef snatches a bottle of whiskey from the table. <laughs> Blood flows from Yosef's scalp, pouring over his face and shirt front. His people are shouting. Thunder rumbles, lightning flashes, rain begins to fall, people scatter. Only Yosef and Karen remain now. Sparks flash. Yosef screams like a beast. <laughs> the sound of an electric green breaker blowing the tires screeching. Lights out. Lights up on. Eve bolts right upright in her bed at the fireside inn. She was having another nightmare. She looks at the clock. Shit, I'm late. Eve runs to the mirror, slaps herself a couple times, gets ready. Hear a knocking at the door. Eve freezes. The knocking commences. Eve, it's Mara. Eve exhales. She opens the door. Hi, Mara. I'm late for work. Walk me downstairs. Eve, I need to talk to you about those people you were hanging out with last night. Uh, maybe when I get back, OK? Eve, it's important. Captain Addison. What about Captain Addison? He's there. Good morning, lady. <laughs> I'll walk with you. We can chat with you. Exit Eve with Captain Addison. Laura exits in the opposite direction. House lights up on the Riverside Theater. Karen wears a headset and carries a clipboard. She climbs on stage and addresses the house. Five minutes until we start our run through! Thank, Thank you, five! <laughs> Yosef is seated in the third row, wearing a beret, sunglasses, and a hoodie. He stands. Hey, can I get the band back here at the top of this queue, please, and bring the house lights down a bit? I want to look at Truffaut's special real quick. So from Delphina Solo to the special on Truffaut. D Delphina to Truffaut. Can we see that? Yes, we can, darling. We are back in three minutes, people. Three minutes! Thank, Thank you, three. three! Delphina and the band return to the stage. <coughs> Delphina stands on an X of Gaffer's tape, bathed in blue light. She sings a jazz version of Revelations, made in United. Oh. Or not. Are <laughs> you reading? Oh, I, I forgot the rhythm. Oh, God of earth and oh. altar, bow down and hear our cry. Our earthly, earthly rulers alter, our people drift and die. The walls of gold and tomb us. The swords of scorn divide. Take not thy thunder from us, but take away our pride. Two men wearing short sleeved <laughs> shirts with black skinny ties on sit on a park bench, waiting, listening. Even Addison entered the theater. Yosef smiled. Keep going, you're late. Quickly, quickly, over here. This is the moment of the peripatia, the reversal in the action of the play. It is also the moment of realization that they're waiting for Goddard may actually be in vain. Watch. Here it comes. Okay. I got it. What, what the hell are they waiting for? <laughs> Please! And now it builds. The music builds. A blue gel <laughs> illuminates the park bench. The music stops. Chufro turns to Eric Romer. So, where the hell are we? Lying. I have no idea. Excuse me? Your line is, I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> Don't speak. How can I help you, Captain? I just need a couple more minutes of your time. Of course. 
Best way, please. They step on stage. Eve climbs on stage and introduces herself to Francois Truffaut and Eric Romer. Truffaut places a fedora on Eve's head. Eve speaks with the accordion player. So all night Thursday and well into the morning Friday, you were where again? Right here in this theater. All of us, including Lila. She left at 2 in the morning. The accordion plays Nouveau, Vague, Dance with Me. Truffaut and Romer and Eve dance with the Madison from Godard's La Bette Park. You see, well, Joseph, local lore has it. You used to be some kind of cabana boy. A beach bum. Is that true? They say Miss Collins brought you home with her from some couple's resort in the Black Sea. This is much more interesting, Joseph. Yes, it is. Joseph walks towards Eve. Addison follows. A player wrote in Kosovo won a Pulitzer Prize. Karen and I came here as refugees. Brilliant choice, Eve. All right, everyone back to the blue special this time. Let's start with the accordion. Truffaut, give us... Maybe we should hang ourselves, then deliver your next line after the two of you have finished dancing one full square of the Madison. You like it? I'm stealing it, aren't I? He takes a beret off Yosef's head. Yosef's head is completely bandaged with white gauze. Kosovo. I see. Are you a Muslim, Yosef? Why do you ask? Because something isn't kosher about me, Yosef, <coughs> and I can't put my finger on it, but I will. <laughs> and I assure you, the truth will eventually happen. Everybody loves a good outing. Is that what you're saying, Captain? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Especially around this neck of the woods, Joseph. That sounds sinister. What do you mean, we? You just moved here. You mean I just returned here a couple of months ago. The past determines, Joseph. Then why don't you return to figuring out what happened to my wife, Captain, instead of asking me whether I'm sure I was surrounded by 20 other people when she was killed? That's what you should be trying to figure out. Who is responsible? And who is responsible, Yosef? Yosef looks around the theater, at the audience, the people busy at work behind the scenes. He sighs. I suppose I am. You see, all I see, Yosef, is that you wear an awful lot of black. But it don't look like you're mourning very much to me. <laughs> Excuse me? We're back, people! Thank, Thank you, back! back. No. Please? All right, two seconds. I like the way you all repeat orders around here. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Communication's everything, Yosef. Miscommunications cause tragedies. They really do. Karen, are you my biological mother? <laughs> what? I'm too young to be your mother. I've never had children, Eve. Why do you ask me this? Hey, Eve, um, I'll let you get back to doing whatever it is you intend to do for these people, and if you don't mind once you finish doing it, why don't you stop on by my office real quick? Sound like fun? <laughs> sure, Captain. Uh, excuse me, sir. Stand up, please. May I see some identification? Examines audience number's ID card. Just my humble opinion, Yosef. Shit, I'm no Cisco and Eber, but the place sucks. <laughs> Makes no sense at all, and all the naked Frenchmen in the world are going to be able to save this thing. <laughs> what naked Frenchmen? They're wearing clothes. I see where it's heading. Come on. <laughs> My point is, if you put on this play, this filth, the way it is now in this town at this time of the month with tensions as high as they are in the world, we're going to have a riot on our hands, Joseph. Know, the people are going to flip out. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Here, thank you, Mr. Ramirez. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Card. Do the right thing, Yosef. Think of the greater good. And remember, it's all psychological. You yell barracuda, everyone says, huh? Well, <laughs> you yell shopper. We got a panic on our hands on the 4th of July. Exit Captain Addison. <laughs> Yosef looks after him long after he leaves. He approaches. Oh, cursed spite. That I was born to set it right. She offers Yosef a carrot. With a carrot? Or a turnip. What do you think? Should we do it? I don't know. They're props. Do you plan on using them in Godard? Oh, Jesus, right, the carrot. Oh, oh boy, you. What? What do you know about theater riots? What, like actual riots in? In the theater, or involving writers, directors, or producers of theater? Why are you laughing? <laughs> because, actually, I know a lot about theater riots. I mean, a whole lot. I sure hope so. Tell me some of the more notable ones so I can feel in good company. Okay. Probably be the Belgian Revolution. The Flemish poured out of the theater into the streets, singing lines from an opera the entire time and took over the country. 
Was the writer at the performance? Sure was. What happened? His body was too damaged to do, with, to do anything with at that point, but the crowd carried a burning likeness of the writer, right at the front of the mob, even when they stormed the national treasury. So he was paid after all? What a Faustian deal. Pretty much. I'm fucking with you, Yosef. Burning likeness. <laughs> a burning likeness of you and me if we put on this horrible playwright, this filth. Where are you going? I can't concentrate like this. I might as well get it over with and see Captain Addison now. Then I can focus on what we're doing. Eve, wait. An easy way for the blind to go. What did you just say? We're back, people! <laughs> Why are you always so... Thank, Thank you, back. Whenever you're ready, Carlos. Carlos plays the piano. Delfina steps beneath the blue light again. She watches Eve. So cryptic. An easy way for the blind to go. A clever path for the fools who know. The secret of the hanged man, a smile on his lips. Eve, listen to me. I do not trust him. Jesus, Yosef. I'm not a child. I can handle myself. Eve kisses Yosef on the cheek and turns to leave. I'll be right back. The light of the blind will see. The venom tears in my spine. The eyes of the Nile are opening, you'll see. Eve stops at the top of the aisle. Yosef walks up behind her. We all see eventually, that is what I'm trying to say. You've read a lot, and you've heard a lot that you haven't done very much. There's nothing wrong in that, darling, but the fact is the fact. Okay, Yosef. I know things you don't because I have experienced things that you haven't. Yosef, I understand. Just because someone is wearing a uniform does not mean you can trust them either. Yosef! I'm coming. Yosef? What? I'm a big girl. I've got this. For the one who will be queen, the watcher in the ring, it is you. It is you. <coughs> Next to Eve, Yosef walks out for a moment and falls into a bit of coffee. He covers his mouth with a white handkerchief. It fills with blood. He also quickly stuffs it back inside his pocket. He turns and walks down the aisle. Okay, music great! Now after the solo, let's keep going. Run through the dialogue and bring the house lights down for this, please. We are at the crux of the story here. This is the message, people! This is it! The house lights dim. Yosef and Karen sit next to each other in the first row. A spotlight illuminates Francois Truffaut and Eric Rowan on their park bench, stage right. I have no idea. Maybe he's with his agent. It does not have an agent. Besides, I am the one who wrote the treatment for the film. With no rights anymore? Through fall looks stage left, contemplating the question. An overhead light illuminates Captain Addison's office. Filing cabinets, military awards, framed photos, an MCIOC flag, or Marine Corps Information Operations Center, adorns the wall behind a well-organized desk. Addison enters his office, still wearing his dress uniform. What did you say? We've lost our rats. We got rid of them. Enter Eve. She walks down the aisle. Addison watches her. He smiles and removes a bottle of wild turkey and two glasses from a filing cabinet. The lights dim on Truffaut and Romer. Patsy Kleins, he calls me baby. He plays over Addison's desktop radio. He fills the two glasses of whiskey on top of his desk and sets the bottle down. Addison motions for Eve to take a seat in the chair in front of his desk. Flies. What did you want to see me about, Captain? <coughs> Here, drink up. You'll need it. Addison unbuttons his jacket, takes a drink, and sits in his chair behind the desk. Eight nights ago, Lila Collins, Yosip's dead wife, was in Corona Del Mar. Corona Del Mar? Surprise. That's good whiskey, you know. Go ahead. Go ahead and go. No, thank you. Eight nights ago, Lila had dinner with two other people. One of them was a chemist named David Godot. Godot used to work for Guangzhou Pharmaceuticals in China. And you know what they talked about? No. Thank you. Who's that? Not who. What? A hundred times more potent than morphine? Fifty times stronger than heroin. Are you all right? No. Wait a second. His name was Godot? That's not familiar. Addison takes another drink. He stares at disbelief. The money, the honey, and the meal. What are you saying? 
Three people, $250,000 investment, $10 million profit. Yosef's wife was there to put up the cash. Half up front, the other half on delivery. Godot provided the dough. The mule made the trip with him here to Amity Harbor to close the deal and make the exchange. What does this have to do with me, Captain? Why do you think I'm telling you this story? I don't know. Godot never showed up. He disappeared. But the word on the street says the mule between the dough and the inner client here in Amity, Dan Turkey. The one who made the trip with him here to Amity Harbor and closed the deal and makes the exchange is you. That's a lie! I I can prove it! I drove to Amity because I received this letter from my biological mother. She finally wants to. She wants to love. That's impossible. It's That's impossible. His love is gone. Mm -hmm. Yes. What? No evidence? Oh, Evie. Evie. Sweet little Evie. Don't you know? Evidence is everything. I swear, I have nothing to do with this. Let me tell you a story. It happened when I was stationed in our nation's capital. There was this one young woman, very attractive, a lot like you. Used to hang out at Gypsy Sally's in Georgetown, where she did a lot of drinking, a lot of screwing, you know. Well, one day, she had a bit too much to drink that night, and on her way home, she runs over a pedestrian crossing the street near the Potomac. Kills her instantly. But it was late, no witnesses to identify her, so she just kept driving and left the old lady there dead in the road. And her vehicle wasn't damaged, just had a little blood on it. So she goes to an all-night car wash and runs it through three times. After that, she goes home, goes to bed, and tries to pretend the whole thing never happened. <laughs> the problem was, even though no one saw her at the scene, the camera got her plate number. Add that to the fact her credit card was run three times at a car wash that same night. And of course, the final nail in the coffin was the autopsy, where the medical examiner found a chip of cherry red paint that matched the cherry red paint of her Mustang. And that's when they had her ass stone fucking cold why the chain of evidence you see Eve just because someone doesn't see you do something doesn't mean you didn't do it why are you telling me this because it makes my pussy laugh <laughs> I am an officer of the law Eve and that makes my pussy sobbing wet does my story make you wet no because you're not that good of a storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> behind his desk, slowly approaching Eve. You see, Eve, some are born great. Some achieve greatness, and some, well, appears to reach between Eve's legs. Some just have greatness. Thrust upon them. Captain Addison produces a little plastic bag of white powder from beneath Eve's chair. He holds it up for her to see. Looks like you dropped something. You know that's not mine. Captain Addison tucks the bag into his inside breast pocket, dusts his hands off, and shows Eve that they're empty. He smiles. <laughs> I want to go now. Guard, you're free to go. Just a friendly chat. That's all. Look, Eve, please do not mistake my passion for pressure. But this community is in the grips of a deadly and foreign plague. And I will do whatever it takes to make Amity safe for her citizens to understand each other. Eve is trembling. She stands, Addison watches her intently. Oh, one more thing. How did you get that scab on the side of your, your melon there? Eve freezes. <coughs> she thinks for a moment. Uh, mountain biking. <laughs> Eve turns and walks away, up the aisle. Well, let's just hope they don't find any paint from your vehicle on Lila Collins' autopsy, but that little scab of yours is going to look like Death Race 2050. Say hello to Joseph. A violent blazing opening to kind of share his ideas I didn't know. Captain Addison finishes his wild turkey. Eve exits the theater, running. Lights up on Yosef, sitting in a chair. On the opposite side of the stage, he doubles over in pain, holding his abdomen, then covers his mouth with a handkerchief. Enter Eve. The theater is empty now, except for the two of them. Yosef sees Eve approaching, visibly upset. He stands. Eve notices the handkerchief in Yosef's hand. Yosef shakes his head. 
He stuffs the handkerchief into his pocket, then extends a hand towards Eve. She runs into his arms. They sway back and forth to the music. He also caresses Eve's hair. They begin to dance, gracefully, full of longing and sorrow. He also spins at Eve. She laughs. They turn circles faster and faster. Eve throws her head back and shrieks with delight. Enter the band, playing along to the music. Delphina sings. One of the same chants takes Delphina into his arms and begins to dance. Enter Truffaut and Romer, waltzing together. Soon the stage is full of couples, dancing circles to the music. Liquor pours, glasses shatter against the floor. Enter Karen. She observes an impromptu gypsy ballroom and shakes her head. Yosef and Eve stop dancing. They gaze into each other's eyes. Eve caresses Yosef's cheek. They're about to. That's enough, people! We're, we have five minutes! Thank you, five! Thank you, Thank five! You five. Um, all right, listen up. We have officially two weeks left until opening night. That means that... Karen, Yosef, they've taken Elena. What? The soundboard operator bursts into the theater followed by a group of carpenters from the scene shop. She was picking up the children from daycare and they took her away. Immigration? I don't know. No one will tell me anything. Are we finished for the day or what? What the hell's going on here, Yosef? My children, you bastard. Look, I hear what you're saying, ma'am, but that's not our problem. I haven't been paid in over a month. I got a family, too. Where's our money, Karen? Look, guys, your checks haven't been cut yet. I. I already told you it's... You keep giving us the same tired-ass excuse, Yosef. Now, we're working on a Sunday, man. This is horseshit. You will all be paid. Please, just try to... Is anyone listening? His wife and his children have been taken. What's wrong with you people? Well, if he spent less time drinking and partying with these fuckers and decided to pick up his own kids, they'd still be here, now wouldn't they? You son of a bitch! Yuri, wait! A fist fight breaks out. Eve takes an elbow to the side of her head. She drops to the floor, but keeps kicking and punching. Yosef dives in the middle of the fray. People roll on the ground, grappling and choking one another as a brawl spreads into the aisles. Carpenter number one puts Joseph into a headlock. <laughs> Yosef! Yosef, Karen jumps into Carpenter number one's back. She beats him with her clipboard. Let go of him! Get off me! Call the union, Marty! Quick! <laughs> Carpenter number one, number one flips Karen over his shoulder. He slams her onto the floor, knocking the wind out of her. Then, it realizes what he's done. No! Here, you want someone to hit? Hit me, I'm the one to blame. The theater goes silent. Karen gasps for breath on the floor. Everyone stops. Karen, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Don't touch me! What the hell's the matter with you? He helps Karen to her feet. See, that's what happens when you... You feel like a man now, Mr. Tough Guy? That's what happens when you don't pay your workers. Yosef stares at Karen and Eve. I'm so sorry. I don't know how you do things wherever the hell you people come from, but this, in this country? Asshole! In this country, these conditions are unacceptable, you hear me? Un-fucking acceptable. Here! You want to see how people do things where I come from? Yosef rips his shirt open and throws it to the floor. People gasp. <gasps> Here! Look at me! This is what people do for their country. This country! My country! Look at me! This isn't patriotism! This is nationalism! Homeland! Yeah, look at me! Yosef raises his arms. He turns so everyone can see his body. His entire torso is covered in horrific burns and scar tissue. Right here and now, in this country, you are not far behind, my friend. Believe me, that's why this play, this play is so... Yosef. Yosef stumbles and catches himself. Karen tries to help him. He pushes her away. And he places his palms on his knees and breathes for a moment. I apologize for your pay being so late. The police froze all of my accounts after Lila was killed. Why didn't you just tell us that from the beginning so we'd have a choice? You can't do that to people. Eve pulls Karen aside. Max, the saxophone player, begins to play the solo for Pink Floyd's Us and Them. Delfina and the rest of the band nod their approval. Karen, I need to talk to you about what I asked you earlier today. Eve, I already told you. About my mother? I don't have time for this. Karen, please. I don't know! But the letter you sent me said... What letter? Just leave it alone! Please! 
The theater doors burst open. The sax solo approaches its climax. Down! Everybody down on the floor! Put your hands behind your head! Do it now! Ice agents wearing tactical gear rush into the building. Their empty MP5 submachine guns at the ready. They snatch people from the audience and throw them to the floor, pointing automatic weapons at them. Yuri is handcuffed and dragged out of the building along with stagehands, musicians, and true followers. What are you doing? You have no rights! Yuri! Let's go, amigo! Move your ass! I am not Mexican. It's French, you fascist! Bullshit! Very, very French! Okay, okay, I am Algerian, alright. I'm an Algerian citizen, check my passport. Passport? <laughs> Even love! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! The agents separate people into groups and begin checking identification papers. As the chaos subsides, those without documentation are escorted out of the building in an orderly fashion. Max almost finishes his solo when an ICE agent takes his sacks away. Enter Captain Addison, wearing his dress uniform. He surveys the scene and notices Joseph, Eve, and Karen sitting on the edge of the stage, sharing a cigarette. Eve holds an ice pack to the side of her head. Captain Addison smiles. Hell of an evening, huh? What is it now, Captain? <laughs> Didn't mean to break up your rehearsal there, Joseph. Sorry about all this, I really am. But I don't make the laws, I just enforce them. <laughs> Mountain biking again. He glares at Addison. <laughs> she scoots closer to Joseph. Karen stands. She turns to walk away. No, no, no. Hold on a second. Come here, please. Miss, come back in. Miss? That's right. Mm -hmm. Fine. Do we know each other? Are you serious? Serious is the play. <laughs> we good to go, boys. The last of the ICE agents gave Captain Addison a thumbs up and exits the building. Now, let's see. A mountain biking accident? Hit and run homicide, a life insurance beneficiary, all in the same room. Hell, all in the same room. It does make one think a bit. You've done a lot of thinking. Yes, I have. I certainly have. You wouldn't have any drugs on the premises, would you, Miss? Karen. Miss Karen. <laughs> no. Is that the truth? Captain Addison looks at Eve, and Yosef, and back at Karen. They remain silent. John 832. Then you will know the truth. Truth will set you free. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I didn't take you for a religious man, Captain. Hell, I was an altar boy, Joseph. Hard to picture. Excuse us for a moment. Addison leads Karen away from Joseph and Eve by her elbow, stage right. He speaks almost directly into Karen's ear. You all right? Are you? No. Want to get a drink? That balloon. <laughs> That's not really what I had in mind. Well, time to hit the road. Sorry for the inconvenience, folks. Just doing my job. Oh, and Yosef, please try not to start a riot with this show of yours. The community's already pretty riled up about it. Have a good evening. Addison walks up the aisle. Were you really an altar boy, Captain? Addison stops. Is that the truth? Yuri Kamede Eti he turns around. Deliver me from the unjust and deceitful man. I'll see my office car. He smiles, fades. Captain Addison turns and walks out of the building. Karen steps on stage. She addresses the remaining cast and crew members. That's it for tonight, people. I'll email everyone their call times for Monday morning by midnight. Exit Karen. The cast and crew members exit as well. Ready? Actually, I think I'm just going to get some rest. It's been a lot to process. I gotta go. Sure. Of course. Exit Eve. Joseph exhales with a sigh. 
He reaches into his pants pocket and removes a small baggie of white powder. He contemplates the bag for a moment, opens it, then looks out at the audience. Yosef doubles over, holding his abdomen. The baggie falls to the floor. Yosef exhales deeply until the pain subsides a bit. Enter man number two from the first scene of the play, low crawling to the foot of the stage. Yosef picks up the baggie, puts it back into his pocket, then walks off stage. He turns off the theater lights. A single spot remains, illuminating the place where Yosef was standing. Man number two hums to himself as he slowly lifts his head above the stage to look in the direction Yosef exited. Carefully scoops up the small amount of spilled powder into a plastic baggie of his own. He sings as he slips away into the darkness and lights out. Where is Godot? Where is Godot? Bill, Bill, Bill. Sound effects. The sound of a car driving, accelerating through its gears. Lila died in a hit and run homicide. Why did you kill her, Eve? To tell us. Lights up on Eve, tossing and turning in her bed at the fireside inn. The sound of the accelerating car grows louder. You killed her. Leave me alone. Filthy. Leave me alone. Filthy. 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 The filth is you. Sound effects. Tires screech. The sound of a horrific car crash. Eve bolts up right in her bed. You're filthy! The sound of a Cassia watch alarms pulsates with the same two syllable beat as the word filthy. Eve, Eve snatch, snatches the watch from the nightstand and throws it against the wall. The alarm stops. Eve looks around the room. She exhales into her hands and flops back, flops back into her pillow. She groans. Eve gets up, dresses, then walks across the stage to the Louvre. Paris is the Lamas. Mara's behind the bar, polishing highball glasses. What's the matter, kid? Another nightmare? Yes. They laugh. <laughs> Mara places the glass in front of Eve. Eve sings as she takes out her notebook and places it on the bar top. So set him up, Mo. I've got a little story. I think you should know. Mara takes out another glass and pours two generous whiskeys. Make it one for my baby. And one, one more than the road. Eve stares right through Mara. Cheers. You okay? Yeah. They drink. Eve, finish, Eve finishes her drink, her whiskey, and three swallows. What were you dreaming about? Death. It comes to us all, honey, and you can't just sit around thinking about it all the time. I don't. Well, what's the matter? What were you trying to tell me when Captain Addison interrupted us? Why have you been spending so much time with you and Brodovic? I asked you first. Really, though, the two of you, what have the two of you been doing together in these last few nights? Moira, have you slept with him? No. Don't you think he's a little old for you? <laughs> Why are you so curious? Moira turns a bottle of whiskey to its place on the shelf behind the bar. Moira, did you and jo Joseph ever... Moira rearranges the bottles on the shelf, keeping her back to Eve. <laughs> oh my god, Moira. You're terrible. When did the two of you hook up? Don't be vulgar. You make it sound trashy. <laughs> <laughs> you did, didn't you? What was he like? Please stop. It's not... I was oh, in love with him, Eve. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Well, it's all right. It was a long time ago. Well, if it's any constellation, it's not like that with us. Though, I do have to admit, there's something about him that just drives me crazy. Us? It's weird. Us? Yeah, maybe it's just because we're so much alike. He finishes Moira's whiskey. I've noticed. <laughs> So why did you guys break up? Well, we worked together. I was with someone else. Wow. Any regrets? One, Eve, I've been meaning to ask you something. Sure. How long have you known Captain Addison? I don't. Then why did he check you into the motel on Friday? What? Because she's up to no good, that's why. Just like that pig. Enter Karen, wearing her short dress and heels. Her lipstick is smeared. 
<laughs> Hello, Karen. Long night. <clears throat> Don't change the subject. You're drunk. Karen sits on the stool next to Eve at the bar. I already told you, I drink. I don't get drunk anymore. <laughs> you went to see Captain Addison. Oh, you're a bad pony, Eve. And I'm not going to bet on you anymore. House of Games. Leave her alone, Karen. Yes, it is a House of Games. Why are you doing this, Eve? What are you talking about? Why now? Revenge? All right, Karen, that's enough. I'm cutting you off. You haven't even served me yet, Mora. <laughs> Why do you hate me so much? Karen laughs for an uncomfortably. <laughs> St. Mary's football team, nice Irish girlfriend, homecoming queen, the whole nine yards. Apple pie, 4th of July, the American dreamers. And then? And then, one day, an evil magician came to town. A sorcerer, <coughs> Svengali. And Svengali took the nice Irish girl away from the handsome young prince. Oh, no, no, no. He wasn't mad enough to take her away. Instead, after one of his filthy pagan orgies, he would host these infamous orgies every Friday night. He goes smiles, fade. He sets the glass down. At one of the orgies, Spengali filled her virgin womb with his demon seed and sent her home to her prince without so much as a second glance. Moira. Oh. It started to come back now, isn't it? Oh, my God. I swear I had no idea. I, I Horse it! Asin leaps to his feet. You destroyed my entire life, you cocksucker! 
The least you can do is own up to it like a man. And I have spent the last 20 years mourning every single day that I will not be able to know my own son. <laughs> you know what I've been doing the last 20 years? <laughs> Fighting, killing, butchering men, women, children, up to my eyeballs in blood and gore for God, country, and court, you weak piece of shit. All because of you. So let's get one thing straight. I hate you. I hate you. Don't fight for my pain. I'm sorry. That's not enough. Captain, I'm... I'm dying. That's not enough. <laughs> I understand. Thanks for the drink. Yosa turns and walks slowly across the stage. Captain Addison stands behind his desk, his chest heaving from his breathing. He downs the last of his whiskey and throws the glass against the wall. It shatters. <laughs> Lights fade on Addison's office. A lone spotlight illuminates a piano on the other side of the stage. Elfina's deck of tarot cards have been left on top of it. Yosa notices the deck. He hesitates and turns over the top card. The hangman. Yosef laughs until he falls into a fit of coughing. <coughs> he sits down at the piano, then lifts the cover. He plays the melancholy. <laughs> sits next to Yosef on the bench. They sing together. One by one, members of the casting crew enter. They join in singing. We tonight or see the people embark. I wish they could not see me at all. How I wish I could describe their pain or mine. Enter Eve, carrying a manila folder. She walks down the aisle. Mystic light. The choir of smoke, the smell of wood, the pose, the joke. Enter Captain Addison. He walks down the opposite aisle and hides in the shadows, watching the scene with disdain. The dirty little world inside that needs to come out, needs to come out. Enter Karen, wearing dark sunglasses. She walks past Eve, climbs on stage, and shakes her head at the impromptu sing-along. Alright people, this is our first tech rehearsal. Tech rehearsal will officially begin in five minutes. Thank, Thank you, five. Yes. Stage hands finish setting up a tech table on one corner of the stage. Yes. The soundboard, light board, and projection designer monitors on the top of it. Eve walks over to the piano and hands Yosef her manila folder. Yosef no. walks over at Eve questioningly, then begins to read. Eve walks over to Delfina. They speak in private. She draws a card from Delfina's deck. Delfina shakes her head. Yes. Eve, you little shit, you didn't come here! He walks back over to Yosef. He lifts her he lifts her off the ground. Woo! <laughs> that sets her back down. How many pages does Waiting for Gano have? Sixty, I think. And what page are we on right now in God? Fifty-two. Perfect. Hurry up, make coffees! What's going on? Karen sets her coffee down on the tech table, then speaks off her microphone headset. She walks over to speak with Yosef. Eve runs up the aisle and hands the new pages to a production intern. The intern runs out of the theater. Captain Addison slips over to the tech table. He watches Yosef and Karen arguing on the opposite corner of the stage. Addison opens a little plastic baggie and discreetly taps some of its contents into Karen's coffee cup. Eve returns, almost catching Addison in the act. <laughs> Hello there, Eva. Just, just checking on the progress with the break of Addison walks back up the aisle and exits the theater. Eve watches him with suspicion. Karen returns to the tech table and picks up her coffee cup. Eve moves out of her way. Two minutes, people! Thank, Thank you, too! Eve watches.
watching here? What? Nothing. Eve steps off the stage and takes a seat in the front row. Karen drinks her coffee. Stage hands move the park bench into position, aligning it onto pieces of gaffer's tape. They set up the street lamp behind it. Is the projector on yet? I want to see the full moon clip before we even get started here. Come on, let's go! Truffaut, Romeo, lucky film school intern from UCLA, let's get them out here now. Do I have every, do I have to do everything? Karen swoons for a moment that regains her composure. He sort of notices. He walks over to the tech table. Go right. Just let me do my job, Yosef. Fine. Yosef yes, takes a seat at the tech table. Truffaut and Romer sit down on the park on the bench. Enter a young man with a rope around his neck, wearing a vintage 1959 UCLA sweatshirt and a black beret. He carries a tripod case and a camera bag in his hands. Karen bursts into laughter. Other people <laughs> laugh sympathetically. You want to run the dialogue? Sure. Uh, why not? Where the hell is Pozo? You Pozo! Mean, you mean Claude Cherbel? Don't correct me, Yosef. You always correct me. I resent you for that. I really do. What is wrong with you today? This plate of yours, that's what's wrong. It will be the end of me. Lucky film school intern, think, speak. The Nouvelle Vogue rejected the idea of traditional story in the old Hollywood sense of the stories based on narrative styles and structures lifted from earlier media, namely books and theater, since new wave directors did not want to hold your hand through each scene and direct you, the audience, emotion by emotion through a fixed narrative, since there was a general feeling in the air that this sort of storytelling interfered with your ability to perceive and react to film, or theater in this case, just as you would perceive and react to real life, so the directors wanted to break up the film experience and make it fresh and exciting and jolt you, the spectator, out of complacent viewing and make you think and feel not only about what you are watching, but your own lives, your thoughts, your emotions. So dialogue had to be as realistic and as spontaneous as possible. Like my dialogue is right now, or at least philosophical in a way that will make you think beyond film, beyond theater, so we can express the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Truth is of the utmost importance no more than now, more than ever before. So the object is not simply to entertain you, but to communicate. Lucky Bill Seven. We stand there holding a tripod case and camera bag with a blank expression on his face. Yeah, baby! A bazooki begins to play. Karen climbs on top of the bench. She sings to Yosef. See the letter K there on my notebook. Cross out my name forever tonight. Karen continues to sing. This late bowl in insinuation. If not exists. English super titles are projected overhead. Delphina sings harmony with Karen. He marches towards Yosef, scolding him with a finger. Yosef loves it. He backs away from them. Laughing, dancing, glasses filled with liquor. Yes! Everyone sings the chorus together, happy and surprised with Karen's unexpected change of attitude. He watches the concert. He looks at the coffee cup on a tech table at the back of the scene unfolding on stage. <laughs> Yosef on the lips and slaps him across the face. She sees Yosef with yeah. both hands in the chest. People cheer. <laughs> Everyone continues to sing. Karen climbs all the way on top of the piano. I curse you! The song reaches its climax. Karen sways to the music. She extends her arm towards Yosef, her face full of pain and heartbreak. Karen collapses, crashing to the floor with a horrific crunch of bone. The sound of wood slamming and the echo of the piano keys. People scream. Karen's chest rises, falls, then stops moving altogether. Yosef rushes to her side, but it's too late. He feels Karen's neck for a pulse. He gathers, he gathers her into his arms, sitting on the floor, rocking her back and forth. Yosef screams like a dying. <laughs> Here violins play a heartbreaking version of Underground Tango by Goran Bregovic as the paramedics arrive and pry Karen's limp body from Yosef's arms. Enter Captain Madison with two uniformed officers. The paramedics cover Karen with a white sheet and roll her away. One by one, everyone leaves the theater except for Yosef and Eve. Yosef kneels on the stage floor beside the spot where Karen passed away only a moment ago. He covers his face with both hands. Eve approaches him, slowly. She touches Yosef's shoulder. He laces his fingers with her. 
with hers. Eve kneels down beside Yosef and embraces him. The music becomes eerie and foreboding. Eve wipes the tears from Yosef's face. She kisses him on the forehead and then on the lips tenderly and passionately. Eve stands. She offers Yosef her hand. He takes it. Eve leads Yosef off stage. Enter two men in ragged clothing. They creep over to the tech table, whispering, singing to one another. They take the coffee cup from the table, then tiptoe back the, up the aisle, smiling with satisfaction. Lights out. Hear violins. Then the accordion playing. Trumpets and other brass join in. Enter pall bearers carrying a casket with Karen's picture on top of it. Yosef, Eve, Delphina, and the rest of the crew, passing crew, follow the casket. Barefoot, dressed in white, they sing tearfully. Stani, stani, stand, watch above them on stage. Captain Addison stands among the officers. Yosef lunges at Addison, but members of the crew hold him back. Addison adjusts his sunglasses. He dusts off his uniform and chuckles with his men. The funeral procession continues up the aisle and out of the theater. Once they are gone, Addison dismisses the officers. He remains behind for a moment, looking after the procession, lost in thought. He spits on the ground, then exits. Projection, motion graphics, ANC headline news. A female news anchor sits at a desk. The music plays. <laughs> The story tonight comes from Amity Harbor, where the Jewish prize winning Balkan playwright Josef Broderick's controversial new play, Waiting for Godard, opens among strong resistance by local law enforcement to shut the play down that many are calling Broderick's greatest work to date. We are going live to Ismini Rodriguez and the drama unfolding at the Riverside Theater. Ismini? A well dressed woman holding her microphone stands in the aisle in front of a video camera. Stage hands set up the bench and street lamp on stage behind her. Thank you, Diana. And yes, tensions and anticipation are high this evening as we await the opening of Waiting for God. The production raises much larger questions surrounding the First Amendment, immigration rights, refugees, and what some are calling a disturbing increase of nationalism in the... Excuse me, you cannot be in here. I'm going to have to ask you to leave, please, this way. The ASM escorts this mean and her crew out of the theater. Cast and crew members gather up in front of the stage. Even Yosef enters the theater, dressed in black. They walk down the aisle, hand in hand. They pause in front of the steps. Eve straightens Yosef's tie and kisses him on the cheek. She joins the cast and crew at the foot of the stage. Yosef climbs on the stage and faces them. Well, here we are, opening night. You know, I had a speech, I was planning to say all these wonderful things. Actually, it's right here. Yosef pulls an endless card from his pocket and holds it up between his two fingers. He smiles at Eve. She rolls her, eye, her eyes. He tosses it into the house. I guess what I really want to say is, is that all of this, the theater, the reason why we do what we do despite pain, loss, rejection, <laughs> Ridicule, financial hardship, and all the other reasons that anyone in their right mind would tell you you shouldn't do what we do. People smile at each other. Yet we do it anyway. Again and again, to our own demise sometimes. It's unfamiliar. We are not normal people. And yes, maybe we're crazy, but to do nothing? To say nothing when the entire world goes mad? Well, I think that is much worse. <coughs> Don't you? And that is why we need 
theater. Why, they need us to hold the mirror up and to say, look, look at what you have become. So, unlike Godot, who never shows up, we showed up here tonight to face our destiny. And unlike Didi and Gogo, we are going to do something about it right here, right now, and people will leave here different than when they came in. They will be changed. Even if it's just a little bit, that's enough. And we will have done our job. So when that curtain goes up tonight and all those people are watching, young, old, conservative, liberal, the police, <laughs> let's not forget about the police. <laughs> <laughs> just remember you are doing the most important work in the world, to entertain. We enter in, we hold them close, and then we send them back out into the streets with a new way of seeing the world. Okay? Yeah! <laughs> uh, uh, I was ready to open Yosef, we're officially sold out. Okay, just two more minutes. Um, Eve, will you lead everyone and weather the weather real quick? Eve nods, smiling with excitement. Captain Addison walks across the stage slowly towards Yosef. Whether the weather is cold or whether the weather is hot, we'll, we'll be together, together whatever, whatever the weather, weather whether, whether we, we like, like it or not. not. Well, congratulations, Yosef. Looks like you pulled it off after all. Thank you, Captain. Whether, whether the weather is cold or whether the weather is hot, hot. Maybe it's about time I tell you where your son, Evan, is. Call it a peace offering. Nobody in that yet. We'll be together whatever the weather, weather, whether we like it or not. How do you know? Where is he? Whether, whether the weather is cold, or whether, whether the weather is hot. As it speaks, but can no longer be heard over the casting crew. Yosef's expressions, expressions, expression transforms from shock to horror. Addison smiles. He walks away, then stands beside a wall near the front row. We'll, we'll be together, together whatever the weather, weather, whether, whether we like it or not. Everyone rushes to their places. The front door is open. Ushers inspect tickets and help people find their seats. Uniformed police officers stand at the back of the theater, observing. Yo Yosef stands on stage, catatonic, in front of the curtain. Eve is in the aisle, near the fourth row, smiling and speaking with Mona. <coughs> Yosef and Eve see each other across the room. His expression fills Eve with fear. Yosef steps off stage and walks briskly up to the opposite aisle. He runs out of the building. Eve rushes over to Addison. What did you say to him? The truth. Bastard! Eve runs up the aisle and out of the theater. The lights go down, the curtains open, people applaud. Truffaut is sitting on the bench. Rover stands by the streetlight. On the, other, on the other side of the stage, beneath the spotlight, Carlos begins to play O Fortuna on the piano. Piano guy's version. Moira stands. She looks at Addison, then back to the front doors. She runs up the aisle. Addison follows her. Projection. A full moon rises behind Truffaut and Rover. What is wrong with you? Nothing. Enter Yosef, walking down the opposite aisle in a daze. He opens an imaginary door and then walks up the, step, the steps. He is home now. Yosef stands next to the piano. Carlos continues to play. Yosef stirs off in thought. Was I alone asleep? I do not know. Where shall we go? Not far. Yosef runs his hand over the top of the piano. He looks up at the rafters. A chain with a hook at the end of it hangs from a crossbeam overhead. He'd punish us! He looks up at the street light. The power's all out, except for this one. Looking up at the light. What is it? The light. Carlos stands. He also drags the piano bench away. Across the floor, he places it alongside the piano. Carlos continues to play. Why don't we hang ourselves? With what? Haven't you got a bit of room? No. Then we can't. Yosef steps up onto the bench, then climbs on top of the piano as Karen wants him. He stands. Carlos continues to play. Wait! There's my belt! It is too short. Yosef removes his belt. He examines it, then looks back up at the hook and chain. Roma removes his belt and looks up at the streetlight. His pants fall down. Audience members laugh. Oh. A bass drum joins in with Carlos's piano. A procession of people in ragged clothes enter the theater. They walk down the aisle towards Yosef, glass pipes in one hand, flaming cigarette lighters in the other. Their faces are illuminated by the flames. 
they sing in unison. <laughs> Then tests his strength, his, with, his, tests his weight against it. Romer and Truffaut each other take hold of one end of Romer's belt. They nod to each other. The course of the play gathers at the foot of the stage, in front of Yosef. <laughs> Secures it tightly. Romer and Truffaut pull Romer's belt out between them in a tug of war. Silence. Carlos plays single notes. Joseph looks out at the audience. He closes his eyes and steps off the top of the piano, hanging himself across the stage. Truffaut and Romer fall over backwards as a belt snaps between them. A cello accompanies Carlos. The chorus slips away into the shadows. Joseph le Joseph's legs twitch for a moment, then fall still. His body swings gently back and forward. Carlos closes a key lift and exits. Enter Eve. Running down the aisle, she slowly climbs the steps. She looks up at Yosef and screams. <coughs> Lights out. Lights up on Truffaut and Romer, standing beneath the streetlight. Each holds a piece of Romer's belt in their hands. You say we have to come back tomorrow? That makes no sense. The festival ends tonight. And jean Godard Godard is probably closing a deal with Paul Degas right now, even as we speak. Without us? Oui, bien sûr. Then what was this all for? Why would he do such a thing? To distract us from the truth, mon ami. Lights up on the Louvre, on the opposite side of the stage. Enter Moira. She hangs up her coat and pours herself a drink. Go, oh, Moira. Jesus, you scared me. I didn't hear you come in. Moira notices the pistol in Addison's hand. You look good, Moira. How you been? I've been okay, you know, keeping busy. <laughs> <laughs> she backs away from him. Where are you going? Come here. Mora doesn't move. Addison cocks the hammer of his pistol. I said, come here. Mora complies. She approaches him slowly. Is that a girl? Now give me a hug. Addison, you're scaring me. What? We used to be so close, Mora. Come on. He opens his arms. Still holding the pistol in one hand, Moira inches her way into his, into his embrace. There we go. Mm, just like old times. Okay, okay. She pats Addison on the back. Addison Please. places the barrel of his pistol to the side of Moira's head. Please don't. You know, it really threw me a curveball seeing you in that theater tonight, Moira. Paying good money to go see that film. After all this time, you still want it, don't you? You want his. Filthy, greasy, foreign spunk again, isn't it? That's what you want. Answer me! No! Get up against the bar! You're hurting me! Bend over, goddammit! Stop! What are you doing? I can do whatever I want with your filthy ass. Addison presses the side of Moira's face against the top bar top. He fumbles with the zipper to no avail. The pistol is still in his hand. I am the hand of justice! That's what I am. I am the law! I'm... Fuck it. Addison gives up on the pistol. He slides it across the bar top, away from them, then opens his belt, unzips his fly, and dro drops his pants down with his free hand. Enter Eve. She picks up the pistol and points at Addison. Get away from her. <laughs> well, kiss my curtains. <laughs> Look who's here. Sweet little Evie. I said, get away from her. What are you going to do with that gun? Eve shoots Addison in the stomach. <laughs> As he his ass, he sneaks away from Eve across the floor. You killed him! I didn't do shit! What did you say to him? Tell me! I want to know before I kill your sorry ass! He talks to Hammer of the pistol. Eve, don't do it! He's not worth it! You bitches are going to jail. I'm a fucking 
law enforcement officer. Officer down! Officer down, goddammit! It's Addison in the leg. <laughs> Addison screams. What did you tell Yossip? Eve, stop! I told him the truth! What did you say? He shoots Addison on, on Addison's other leg. Woo! <laughs> Damn! Just hold on a second, Eve. You are going way past the close here. I'll tell you everything. Eve cocks the hammer again. She aims the pistol at Addison's crotch. Okay, okay, I did it, I did it, I did it, all right? I ran over Joseph's wife with my truck, I knocked you over the head with my fishing bat. Shit, I even killed this Karen's stupid ass. But that's nothing compared to what you've done and what you've been up to, little Miss Evan Delaney. Oh! Where a screams. What are you talking about? Of her hand. <laughs> You're the filthy love child of Moira Delaney and Yosef Roderick. No. <laughs> Congratulations, Evie! You've been rolling around in the same honey jar with your own bed, you filthy slut! It unloads. She fires round after round into the ash of the torso, pulling the trigger long after the weapon is empty. Mara carefully takes the pistol away from Eve. Eve is trembling. She stares catatonically at the carnage of Addison's body. Eve. Eve walks to the bar, picks up a bottle of whiskey, and smashes it over her own face. No! Blood pours from Eve's eye socket. She has blinded herself. Moira runs for a bar towel and wraps it around Eve's eyes. She rushes Eve down the steps and carefully helps her walk up the aisle on the opposite side of the stage. Romer looks at looks to Truffaut. I can't go on like this. A whistle blows. <laughs> Uniformed police officers march into the theater. The show's officially closed. All cast and crew members are ordered to vacate the premises immediately. Let the finish! Yeah, it isn't over yet. You, with the tuba! Step down here, sir. Show me your hands. Una mattina mi son svegliato. Oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao! Put the instrument down, do it now! Una mattina mi son svegliato. This is your final morning. <laughs> Officers attempt to arrest casting crew members who evade them. They're running around the theater as they refuse to stop singing and playing their instruments. The whole theater fills with song. Even those being hauled away continue to sing and play along. As the theater riot, Joseph once spear takes beautiful shape. Singing and shouting can be heard outside the theater, in the streets. Finally, only Truffaut and Roma remain, humming quietly to themselves. Roma's hands are around the Well, shall we go? Yes. Let's go. They do not move. Projecting text. Resist. Lights fade.
my pleasant home. Planet Paprika, this is what we do. Planet Paprika, nobody stay cool. Planet Paprika, this is where we're from. Planet Paprika. Na na na. Na na na. 